Sick of the fatigue and fog, fed up with the unpredictable flares, hangry from the super restrictive diets. Hello, and welcome to the Crunchy Allergist Podcast, a podcast empowering those who, like me, appreciate both a naturally minded and scientifically grounded approach to health and healing. Hi, I'm your host, Dr. Kara Wada, quadruple board certified pediatric and adult allergy immunology and lifestyle medicine physician, Sjogren's patient and life coach. My recipe for success combines anti-inflammatory lifestyle, trusting therapeutic relationships, modern medicine and mindset to harness our body's ability to heal. Now, although I might be a physician, I'm not your physician, and this podcast is for educational purposes only. Welcome back, everyone. I am so excited to have you back to the Crunchy Allergist podcast. Today, we have an extra special guest, Dr. Alina Shabandar, who is an amazing physician. She is department chair. She is a physical medicine and rehabilitation physician, also known as a physiatrist but she's so much more. She has taken something that was really near and dear to her and her patients' hearts and brought it to the world to share with everyone. And we're going to talk all about that. She is a graduate of Northwestern University, both for undergraduate and medical school. And she practices outpatient musculoskeletal medicine. And she has a particular area of interest in women's musculoskeletal health and pain and pregnancy, which is something that with my nine month old Oliver, he was my third and I had so much more discomfort this past time. I don't know if it was because I was edging near 40 or what, but she has spent her many years of medical expertise and knowledge and really put things into a scientific solution. Moms could really safely transport their babies without compromising their physical comfort or the baby's safety. And so She has created the Nestle Baby Carrier and has recently launched that. She is also a wife and mom of three, loves to play tennis and ski and hike and stay active. Thank you so much for joining joining me, Dr. Lena. And I'd love to hear, you know, a little bit more about your journey. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I can share my journey. So I do treat pain in pregnancy and pain after pregnancy. I really love taking care of women and their musculoskeletal health. And what I realized and in in myself too, is how common pain is in pregnancy and after. What's amazing, 50% of women experience some significant pain during pregnancy. 25% of those people, so a quarter of them, end up with disability as a result, even if it's just short term. So we're talking about huge population dynamics. And then when you think about the fact that back pain is the number one reason beyond the common cold why somebody might go to the doctor, it becomes this huge societal burden. And as a mom, I had back pain when I was pregnant with my second and third, and it was really impactful in my life. And so I decided to practice medicine and and focus on this issue. So my patients come to me, they have back pain, they're carrying their babies into the office, usually with a stroller, a stroller with a car seat. And they have to navigate steps to get up. And so they're not usually that comfortable in a stroller. They're carrying this thing in the car seat and it's very uncomfortable, as you know. Yeah, and so yeah. I started looking at this, and one day what happened was that a patient came to me, but this patient was my friend. I was helping her, treating her, and then at the end, I was like, you know what, don't take the car seat back to your car. Let me carry it for you. And so I was carrying it. At this point, my youngest was like four, and my back hurt again, right? So I re-injured my back. And that was my moment where I was like, this has to end. I felt to myself, like, how is it that as a society, we have accepted this concept of a portable infant car seat and what makes this acceptable to us? And so I started to deconstruct this and I came up with a baby carrier. We call it a baby carrier because we turned it into a baby carrier, but really it's a very thin sheath that sits between the inside the car seat, right? Between the baby and the car seat, Uh totally not impeding the harness, totally getting out of the way of what the car seat needs to do. But then when you're done using it, 
in the car seat, you instead of taking the car seat out of the car, you can make that car seat really safe. Just keep it in the car permanently, like your seat that sits in the car, right? Or like convertible car seats that sit in the car. And you just carry this sheath and you have a magnet, like this magnet, this really powerful magnet that's a waist strap. And so you're wearing the waist strap already and it feels a lot like a nice little comfy sacroiliac joint belt. Mm -hmm. And you just click the sheath onto your body and then you just put your arms in and you're done. So it's way easier to use than the regular baby carriers that are out there. And I think from a fabric and dynamics perspective, it's really similar to almost like the slings. Like it's a very mm -hmm. thin, but it's super easy to use and it's a lot more intuitive so yeah we're really excited about the nuzzle baby carrier that's super exciting i recall between our second and our third our infant car seats expired and so this was one of the main things that actually drove my decision making when i was thinking about what type of infant car seat i wanted for oliver was thinking about the pain and the, the weight of those stupid seats. And that was a big decision, kind of decision point that my husband and I made. It would have been less of an issue and probably could have gotten a less, a much, it was still very safe, but I'm wishing things would have been a, a year different <laughs> because that would have been a perfect solution for what, what we were looking for kind of at that time. What is it about female body and or pregnancy that puts us at so much risk for having back pain? Yeah, great question. As the female body has to adjust to make way for baby, right? And so mm -hmm. in the musculoskeletal system, that means that ligaments have to loosen, the muscles have to stretch. And so when you think about the spine without pregnancy, the things that stabilize the spine are a really strong pelvis, that it has a force closed joint. So like between the sacrum and the ilium, which are the wing bones that come out, that's a force closed joint. It's a very strong and stable joint when you're not pregnant. It's still stable when you're pregnant, but it moves. And then you have all the abdominal musculature and all the spine musculature, which is very strong and helps offload our spine by about 50%. So it's a very significant offloading of the discs of the spine. And when you're pregnant, those ligaments loosen, the muscles stretch. And when you're pregnant with your baby, the baby's inside of you, right? And even that can become problematic for all the reasons that are obvious, right? And so your baby is in you, it's forcing your center of gravity to shift forward a little bit. You increase your lumbar curve and sometimes then the hip flexors start to get tight and you end up with these back pain issues and you have the baby. And now this baby is no longer in you. So they're not as close to the center of gravity as they should, as they were before. And I think something that's really important to remember is it's not like your body just snaps back to normal. I remember having my first, okay, I was already a physician and I was like, oh, I didn't gain that much weight. I gained 25 pounds. I should be good to go. I tried to put my jeans on after like yeah. I had the baby <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't even think I'm close. Like, I don't think I could get it past my knees. And I think it was this like myth that you're supposed to just come back to mm -hmm. normal and our bodies never really fully go back to the way they were before pregnancy, but it takes nine months, another nine months for that musculoskeletal system to tighten back up. And so you have to consider that. And so I always think about when we're telling moms to lift and carry and do these things that they do when they have babies, we are asking them to carry car seats and carry other things and put their babies inside of a crib and reaching up and over this. And it's so detrimental to the spine because those muscles have not yet tightened up. And women, a lot of times will have pubic bone separation. So that front of the bone of the pelvis can separate the SI joints that I talked about, they loosen and they have to do that for the mm -hmm. pelvis to open. And then the abdominal muscles can sometimes split, right? So you get a rectus diastasis. And if you don't get that, <laughs> if you don't correct it, it can really impact your spine's ability to do what it needs to do because it's an important muscle in stabilizing the back. So all of those things are really important contributors, not to mention carpal tunnel syndrome, which people get because their hands swell. 
they get rotator cuff problems because same thing, the tendons are loose and now they're carrying and lifting and doing all this stuff. And then we get upper back pain because we're hunched forwards, our breasts are larger. And so we need stuff to help bring us back and down and really give us that upper body support. So yeah, there's just so much in the body. And thinking about all the different contraptions we acquire. I'm just thinking about like the different nursing pillows, and all these different things to try to offload. I always find it fascinating thinking back of it wasn't too many generations ago that we didn't have all of this stuff. And certainly we know that there is increased safety with a lot of the recommendations and changes we make, but they also don't come without some other downstream effects to consider. And some safety things, it's interesting what we choose to pay attention to as a society and what we don't, because if you look at the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations, and I'm not a pediatrician, but I've learned this since doing this, it's like the recommendation is not to take your infant car seat out of the car because Mm -hmm. people leave their car seat. I did it. Like my baby is asleep. I take them out in the car seat. I put them in a corner and maybe I forget about them for a little bit. Right. And in that moment, if that car seat is not at the right angle, their head can drop down, they can suffocate. It actually contributes to the flat head issue because their heads are not free. So there's a lot of downside around the contraptions that we create. And I think sometimes what we do as a society is we look at the intended purpose, right? And we don't mm-hmm. necessarily look at the unintended consequences. Yeah. And so that's partly what I'm trying to do here is say, okay, there are some safety great things that have happened with putting babies in car seats and having cribs and all these things, but what are the unintended downstream negative effects, especially yeah. on the mom? And I think part of this is you look at like language around motherhood is it's all about like, you would do anything for your baby or wouldn't you? You're just a great mom. You'll sacrifice your whole self for your baby. And not that there's anything wrong with giving and giving everything to your baby. I don't think it's an either or situation. I don't think we have to sacrifice ourselves. I think in Mm -hmm. fact, when we take care of ourselves, we're better moms. And so how can we help support moms in knowing that and realizing that and truth be told, I don't think parents need anything to be great moms. Like, yes, I'm selling a product, but the truth is they don't need anything. Like they don't need my product. They don't need car seat, they need a car seat, but they don't need much (laughs) to be a great mom. And so, like you said, you don't need a fancy, expensive car seat. You could just get a convertible that stays in that car and is nice and safe and just use that for three years and you're good to go. But insofar that things are like you have choices or you want to pay more, then there are options out there. Yeah. I love, love the concept of and versus or. And that's a theme that we come back to on the podcast, especially as it relates to thinking about the different strategies we have that can impact our health. It doesn't have to be just conventional medicine or just alternative medicine or just, it can be both. It can be and, it can be all of it. And there's so much power in that idea of filling our own cup first and loving ourselves Absolutely. And even it's interesting because I think a lot about like prevention versus treatment, right? And it's not even just alternative medicine and traditional medicine, but it's what can we do to get ahead of healthcare issues so that we can prevent the issues. And that's where you have to look at that intersection between medicine and society, right? So what are we doing as a society that's promoting health? And what are we doing as a society that's not promoting health? And we're sitting at computers that doesn't promote health. (laughs) We're stressing our kids out about academics. And if you don't get into such and such school when you're 18, these kids get internalized, these messages around like value and worth. And I think that we have to, as parents, that's why I really think it's important for us to really get right with our own selves. Because if we can do that, then we promote messaging to our kids that is healthy and accepting and just allows them to thrive. And I think we have our own anxieties and we have our own worries and we're human and that's okay. And we're all going to make mistakes. But I think if you're coming from a place of pain and suffering, it's really hard to get that stuff right. Yeah. Yeah. I I am just knowing I am not my best self when I am 
tired or I don't feel good. I'm in pain. There's something primal to that. Um, and so can bring some mindfulness and awareness to those tendencies. That's part of it too. And then also trying to alleviate those certainly is really helpful too. I was thinking just about this past week, both my husband and I grew up in these homes of like the clean plate club and our, he treated girls to little Starbucks cake pops and our oldest just this doesn't have, she doesn't like real sweet stuff. And so she had a couple bites and she was like, this is too sweet. I don't want it. And for half for the moment, he was going to try to encourage her to finish or have it later. And said, no, let's listen to her autonomy and to what she wants and rethink about this idea of what waste is, how are we wasting? And so it is sometimes just taking those moments to think about what we're doing as parents and realizing that we can make different decisions on the fly than what we were raised with too. Absolutely. And I think it's the same, it's the same concept, right? It's important not, wait, not to waste very important. It's never more important than it is now. However, where is that waste coming, right? The waste is before you decide to put something onto your plate, right? Yeah. It's like, that's when you can make the choice to put less food on your plate or to let, put less food on your kid's plate and let them just taste things. And then you figure out, okay, this is how much they want. I always tell my kids, like, if you if they're full, you know, if they don't want to eat something, I say, are you full? Are you not hungry anymore? Um, if they say yes, then I say, good. Then rather to waste it in the garbage than to waste it in your body. Yeah. Because it's waste either way. And I think it's the same kind of concept. Actually, interestingly, is as I was making this product, it was super important to me not to waste. And I was getting so worried because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm making something made out of fabric. And fabric is one of the major fillers of landfills, right? So how can I do this in a way that's responsible? And we ended up, and then even waterproofing. So we want the exterior to be waterproof, but like a lot of the waterproofing material is wasteful. It's not great for the environment. And so I started searching like organic waterproofing mechanisms and things like that. And I went down the deep rabbit hole of Google and ended up <laughs> finding this guy who has a patent on this really like environmentally sound waterproofing mechanism. And I found out from him that he uses this in this fabric in Taiwan. And so I called this company in Taiwan and I asked if they could help me customize the fabric. And so we ended up with exterior fabric that's made out of recycled water bottles that has this waterproofing mechanism in it and all this stuff, because I think that's when we're taking stock as a society. Okay. It's easy for me to start this product and say, look, it's really expensive. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a, I'm not a fancy business. I'm just going to do this and then I'll worry about the impact later. And for me, it was just not enough. It was like from the get go, what can we do that's responsible, that's thoughtful and continue to make it better. And of course, as we learn, but it's the same concept. Like what is the upstream and the downstream effect of what we're doing in life? And then if at that moment you have to do what's healthy for your family, you do that, right? But you can have rest assurance in the fact that you're looking at the entire chain of impact on the world. I think that opens up certainly my eyes to more of all of the, you know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And so I know very little about product development, especially development of a baby carrier, but things I wouldn't even imagine that would come up in that process. And I always appreciate like knowing the story and the thoughtfulness that goes in behind stuff and behind someone's creation and baby. <laughs> yeah. 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 So if people are interested in learning more about your work, learning and, or maybe looking to check out Nestle, where can they find you? Absolutely. Come find us on www.nestle.com. You can follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Nestle Baby. We're also on Pinterest. We're getting, we have our YouTube links. Those are not really up except for the instruction manual. So I would do Pinterest, Instagram, or Facebook for those. And our website's up and running. You can pre-order your awesome. carrier. 
and also please think of the people in Florida, actually our oh, factory is in Florida. And so we have okay. product there and we're just worrying about the families that are work That's there and be. how they're doing and thinking about that whole impact of the hurricane on society. Yeah. And just for kind of for reference, for those listening, we're recording this on Friday, September 30th. So the hurricane has just gone through there, just taking stock as to how all of those folks are impacted and as the sun's coming up today. Absolutely. And I have one other last quick question about what size or age is Nestle going to top out at? Great question. We say it's up to age two. Okay, Truth great. is I put my like two and a half year old niece in it <laughs> and it's fine. I actually put my nine-year-old niece in it because I was trying to break it. Like I was trying to find the <laughs> point with which it would break and it didn't break. Oh, that's great. Maybe okay. I broke but it didn't break. <laughs> awesome. I just wanted to double check. So I will go get mine pre-ordered now. So I am so excited. Thank you so much, Dr. Lena. I really appreciate your time. Hope you have a great rest of your week. And again, like best wishes to all the families down in Florida and especially hoping everything is okay with Nestle as well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's been great to chat. Take care. If you have found this information helpful and empowering, I would strongly encourage you to hop over to www.crunchyallergist.com and subscribe to our weekly newsletter where we dive into all things allergy, autoimmunity, and anti-inflammatory living. Thanks so much for tuning in. I look forward to talking again next week.